Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some Pittsburgh Steelers tape breakdown and analysis. Today I want to continue our Football 101 series. Got a lot of good feedback on the last 101 series, which I will link in the description below about defense line gaps and techniques. Today I want to flip to the offensive side of the football and just talk about very basic personnel groupings. What does, and you'll hear it on TV quite a bit, a lot on Steelers Depot, what is 11 personnel? What's the difference between 12 and 21 personnel? We'll talk through that today. Before we get into the tape, I'll put up on screen just the basic personnel groupings, but here's the way that they're numbered and what the numbers mean. The first number in, say, 12 personnel, the one means how many running backs or fullbacks are on the field. The second number, the two, in this 12 personnel example, uh, signifies how many tight ends are on the field, and from that you can extrapolate how many receivers are on the field. So in that case, there would be two receivers because there are five eligibles um, on the field on Every single snap, your five offensive linemen, your quarterback, that's six, and five remaining eligible. So on screen right now is the different groupings from 11 to uh, 21 to 22. The most common ones, we could get into stuff like even you know, 10 personnel and things like that. You'll see on there as well. Um, that would signify a four receiver set. You don't see that a ton in the NFL, but that's the idea. That's the numbering, and we'll translate that to the tape to kind of go over, and you can visualize what some of those personnel groupings look like. Now going to the tape and using the Pittsburgh Steelers 2021 season as our guide, just staying with the Broncos game here because it provided enough examples for us. This is an example of 21 personnel. And so here you're going to see Derek Watt, who's a fullback. We'll consider him a running back on the field for this snap with Najee Harris. So there is Derek Watt, Najee Harris. That's the two in the 21 with one tight end. That is Zach Gentry right here. And of course, you have five eligibles. And so that means two receivers in this twin set. I know in this example, Derek Watt is kind of aligned as a tight end wing kind of player. Um, even if he were to align as a tight end and put his hand on the ground, you would still call that 21 and not 12 with two tight ends on the field because the whole purpose of the personnel groupings is for the defense to know what uh, what guys are going on the field for the offense. And so, you know, a, a defensive coordinator and uh, the guys in the field, they just want to know, is it two fullbacks? Is it, is it going to be uh, two tight ends? And the alignment, you really can't predict. This is a way so the defense can know what uh, guys to put on the field. Should they stay in base? Should they be in nickel? Should they be in dime? Et cetera, et cetera. And so um, this does not take into consideration where the players align, just simply who's on the field. And so this is, is an example of 21 personnel. One of the most common personnel groupings you'll see is 11 personnel, which means a three receiver set. And so from what 11 tells us, one running back with Najee Harris, one tight end and Eric Ebron. And of course, that means there has to be three receivers as the remainder. So that is your 11 personnel. Now in this uh, scenario, Denver stays heavy and they don't match that in their nickel defense because it's third and short. Uh, but Pittsburgh in 11 here, but that lets the defense know, okay, Najee Harris is on the field, Eric Ebron is on the field, that means three receivers are on the field, uh, that's going to be the grouping they're going to be using for this play. Different personnel grouping here, this is 13 personnel, you don't see this one quite as much, but when Pittsburgh plays, say the Baltimore Ravens, you're going to see probably 13 personnel a fair amount, and so that means one running back in the backfield here, and that is Benny Snell, and three tight ends. That's one, two, and three, and again, Pat Frymuth standing up, does not have a, his hand down as, in, in, as an inline tight end, still calling that 13, because when he's on the field and the defense is trying to match, they don't know where these guys are going to align. It's just specifically telling you um, the positions that are coming on the field, not where they're going to be lining up, and so one receiver to the top, because you have four other eligibles there, and Benny Snell drops the pass, which is why he should not be on the field that much in passing situations. Go through two more personnel groupings here. This is 12 personnel, and I think by now you're getting the hang of it. One running back, two tight ends, and that, of course, means you have two receivers left over. And so that is 12 personnel. May see that a bit more this year under offensive coordinator Matt Canada. Uh, may see a little less 11, a little more 12, but some of it's circumstantial, and we'll see what happens. But again... One running back, two tight ends, Gentry and Frymuth. That is 12 personnel. Last example here, the fairly rare 23 personnel, which you're going to see in short yardage and goal line. Also, technically, I guess you could call that the victory formation as well, but usually I just call that something a little different as, as victory formation. But to this 23 personnel, meaning there's two running backs, a fullback and a running back and three tight ends. One, 
two, and three, and no receivers. You look at the aerial view because there are already five eligibles accounted for. That tells you there are no receivers on the field. So that is Pittsburgh's ultra heavy goal line short yardage package. That is 23 personnel and Najee Harris getting the ball and not finding the end zone on this play. So that will do it for today's video. I'll post the picture of the personnel groupings again, the most common ones, at least overall. And again, remember with personnel groupings, the first number tells you the running backs and fullbacks on the field, how many. The second number tells you how many tight ends are on the field, and you can uh, suss out the rest of the receivers based on those two numbers. And so that is the very basic uh, foundation of personnel groupings. I know some people know this, but some people don't, and it's a really good just primer in understanding uh, football uh, overall to kind of lay that groundwork to make you a smarter fan. So appreciate you guys watching the video. Please let me know your comments in the comments below. What should we do next as our next installment of Football 101? What would you like to see next? Something you may not fully understand or would like to learn some more information about? Uh, let me know also in the comments below. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel so you can catch the next Football 101. Appreciate you guys watching and we'll talk to you soon.